guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called The School of Sorcery by Dr. Finn Games. And in The School of Sorcery you're playing two players back and forth in this competitive game where you're trying to acquire spells. You'll start with a certain amount of spells and a certain amount of mana and then you're going to roll die, place cards, flip the cards over and place your mana onto certain cards based on how you roll the die. The trick is where you place these specific mana and how you place them is very important important as well. If you gather more mana crystals than another player based on the card, you'll gain that card, gain victory points, and use that card's ability. Different cards have different abilities, and if you're able to accumulate a certain amount of points by the end of the game, you will be the winner of School of Sorcery. Let's go ahead and take a look down below, I'll show you what comes in the game and how to play. So here we have the School of Sorcery and everything included for two players. And to begin the game, it's fairly simple. You're going to take the red cards out of this deck here. There's a deck of different spell cards, green, uh, gold, and red. Take them out, shuffle them up, and then deal two out randomly to each player, putting them face up in front of each player for the beginning of their tableau, as well as victory points. After that, take the rest of the cards and then go ahead and shuffle those cards up and place them to the side. From there, you're going to place the number cards, six, five, four, three, two, and one and just place them like this and take the portal card and place it on the six space right here from there you're going to take the random cards from the top of this deck and fill in each slot next to the number of cards you're also going to go ahead and give each player victory points based on the top right hand side of each card they start with so this player will get two points and this player here will get three points give the oldest player the little wizard hat which will indicate that they're going to go first and each player is going to receive three re-roll tokens additionally each player is going to get three die as well as mana crystals which are going to be hopefully used to gather these magical cards on the area of the board the final thing here is as you see there's going to be cards in a little deck for each player and it comes with six of them that will basically be used to indicate whether you're going to flip over your die as well as place die onto these spaces here to hopefully gain control of these magical cards and that's the basic setup for the game and all of the components other than the fact that it comes with a certain amount of these bonus cards here which are like exclusive cards to begin the game of the School of Sorcery, you're going to start by having the oldest player go by starting with this little player board here. Now you're trying to get to 13 points, and if you can get to 13 points first, you will win if there's a tie, it'll move until somebody gets higher. Go ahead and start by taking five crystals from your mana pool, and go ahead and just take these guys here and place them in your player pool. You can place them anywhere you want, away from your pool of crystals that you're taking from, or your supply. So there you go, five and five. After that, you're going to then go ahead and cast your cr crystals, which you're going to go ahead and do these things here. You're going to roll your die, and then you're going to place them. So each player is going to roll these die, and then they're going to place them down. Then each player is going to go ahead and take these cards in their hand and place them next to each die they rolled. So you have six cards, you'll be placing three, one for each of the die that you rolled. The, this card here basically says that you can place three crystals onto the number of the die that you rolled next to the card. So if I place this here next to the five, this is going to put three crystals on five. If I put it here, it'd go to the four. If I put it over here, it would go to the two. Now, what's interesting, too, is that you're going to be placing these face down. Both players will be doing this at the same time. There's some other cards that will either have you place no crystals at all, or it'll have you uh, flip over the die from one side to the other side, from five to two, and from something like four to three, and then place crystals. So let's go ahead and say that I want this one here. So I can go ahead and say, okay, I want the four, so I'm going to want to put three here. Now, additionally... There is a six, and this is the portal, which is a wild portal, which we'll talk about in a second here. But for the most part, these are the different types of cards in the game you're going to be trying to gather, which will give you victory points and special abilities. There's three types of cards. There are the red cards here, which are basically going to be used every single time you activate powers. There are the green cards that happen as soon as you gather the card. And then there are the one-time use gold cards. So go ahead and place these down how you uh, choose or see fit. And after that... Each player is then going to go ahead and reveal them. So I'm going to go ahead and place this as well for this one here. Maybe place this one here and place this one here. After that, we reveal. Okay, so this three over here is going to do is going to go with no crystals. We're going to put two crystals on five and three crystals on six. And you're going to be using the crystals in your pool here. If you don't have any, then you can't you can't use more than you have. So three on five. And, or sorry, a two on five and three on six. 
So just like that. And this player over here will do the same thing at the same time. Okay, we're gonna flip five, and then we're gonna go ahead and put two crystals on two. We're gonna put one crystal on two, and then we're gonna put, uh, uh oh, we can't put, put this. We have to actually choose something else. We have to choose something like this one here. Two crystals on four, just like that. After each player has went ahead and placed all of the crystals that they can or choose to place, because you don't have to you don't have to place all the crystals that you have, then we're going to move on to using the portal. And if it's just one player with their crystals on the portal space, that player will simply choose one of these spaces here to place their crystals down on. So we'll go ahead and place these just like that. He can choose to place them on five, four, three, two, or one. If both players had crystals on the portal space, then both players are going to take one of their die, hide it secretly, and then reveal at the same time and place their crystals based on that number. You can only place all of the crystals you have here onto the number that you choose to select. After you've done the, the portal step, then you're going to go out to do the activate power step, which is right here. And activating power is pretty simple. It's going to be based on the first player, whoever has this little hat here, and you're just going to go down the line. Take a reroll token if you have uh, if you have two or fewer tokens, uh, or shift an opponent's crystal if your opponent has more victory points. Neither of which of these I can do because I currently have three reroll tokens and I have more victory points than this player. This player over here has a crystal ball, which says roll a die and add one crystal to that location. Uh, two. So I go ahead and add a crystal to that location. I'm not sure if it actually comes from the pool or not, or if it comes from your own pool, but you'd be placing it here regardless. And then this one here says you roll two die and remove one crystal off of each location that your opponent has. So in this case, this would be a three, no crystals my opponent have there, and this is a six. However, if I roll something like a six and a four, I'd remove one of these blue crystals off. After that, all your powers have been used, you're then going to go ahead and evaluate the locations. And how you evaluate is fairly simple. You're going to be looking at the top left-hand side of each of the cards here, starting with six, going all the way across. We've already done the portal, so we're going to go ahead and move on to five. This says you have to have at least two crystals on this space and be at least one away, one difference from your opponent in order to succeed this. So if, for instance, I had two and one, that would be one away, which would mean that the orange player would take this, this blue player would take this, and the orange player would gather this card. Uh, you're going to basically be getting crystals back, provided you place them on the location if you don't get the card, but it's only going to give you based on the number down here provided. But in this case, I didn't have any as a blue player, so this player is simply just going to get this green card there, which will allow you to shift one of your opponent's crystals. And in this case, we'll go ahead and shift this one over to here, or maybe over to, over to here, and uh, then we're going to go ahead and move on to this one here. This one here is the Book of Fate. It says you need to have five, and uh, he only has two, so we're ignoring this space here. This one over here says you need three, and he happens to have three here, so we'll remove those. We'll take this and place it over here as well. And this says he can stop an opponent from using an immediate power just acquired. And you can only use this once a game. You'll be turning it to the side to show that you've initiated the ability to use it. You're also going to gain victory points for each of these that you've gained. So in this case, he's going to gain two victory points. And then we'll check the next one here. He needs four, only has two. He needs five, only has one. Finally, we'll move everything up. So this is going to go up here. This portal will go up here, and then more cards are going to fill in the blank spaces on the board. If there are no cards that need to be filled in, it'll stay just like it is. If this portal ever were to go to one, it would instead go to six, and cards would fill in from five to one. And then this little hat is going to move. It'll go to the player with the most victory points, and in this case, it's going to be this player over here. In which case, they're then going to take their cards, set them aside over here, they're then going to gather their new crystals, five, and they're going to go ahead and continue playing just like they normally would. And that's pretty much how the game works. It's going to be a back and forth gathering and bidding game in which you're trying to pick the right die spots, gain the most crystals on each of the different areas, and score points until you hit 13. Don't forget, if you need to, use these little tokens here to allow you to re-roll your die during the casting your crystals phase, because you might not like what you get. So in this case, maybe I don't want two ones and a two, so I can spend one of these to re-roll. But otherwise, uh oh, that's not a good one. Come on, something else. There you go. But otherwise, that's basically how you play the School of Sorcery by Dr. Finn Games. Let's come up and talk about it. 
So let's discuss the school of sorcery. And the first thing about this game is caveats, before I forget. When you shift, you shift from one space to the next. You can't just go from four to one. You have to go from four to three or four to five. So if it tells you to shift a crystal, you'll move it from one space to another. Additionally, I don't know if you can, if it, when some of these cards, these red cards will say, take a crystal and place it onto the board in some way, shape or form. I don't know if it's only from your supply or from your, I don't know if it's from your area of crystals that you gain, like your little area that you can spend, like your currency area, or if it's from the supply. Uh, that would be nice to have that cleared up. But otherwise, that's pretty much it as far as anything that I think you need to know about caveats for the game. Uh, these red cards here are always usable throughout the entire game, which makes them very powerful, but they don't have a lot of point value to them. Whereas something more like this green card, which is usable only once, is going to give you up to three points. So you're going to have to go in this back and forth aspect of, do I want more points and less abilities? Or do I want more abilities and less points? How do I want to bid? What is my opponent going for? And do the die align with the things that I want and if it doesn't how can I better change the die to help me uh, the red cards are specifically there to mess with your opponent or to give you some kind of advantage if you are behind so if you are trailing having these red cards that help you out when you have less victory points is definitely going to help you but if you're constantly winning throughout the entire game most of the red cards will not in fact help you because you will need to have less victory points than your opponent in order to use them it's a quick and simple game it utilizes quite a bit of luck because you are rolling die once you run out of reroll tokens if there's no way of you getting them back you're going to have a little bit of trouble with that and additionally there is a lot of strategy because you have to determine where you want to place certain things and how you want to place them your placement really really matters in this game if you place too much on one and not enough on another it might end up costing you especially if you don't win that specific area because it might be a five with a two difference and if you place five and your opponent put four your opponent is only gonna get two back which means they lose two crystals so it means it was a bad placement for them it's quick it plays in about 35 to 45 minutes and you're back and forth going at the same time the turns are mostly simultaneous other than when you you choose to use your powers and how you choose to use them some cards are obviously better than others but that's in essence with a bidding game so if you're bidding on certain cards you're more likely going to get that specific card but it might cost you more or less the portal is also a nice little touch as well adding a little more strategy to the game because you're placing these crystals on the portal which will then have a specific phase in the game to move crystals off that portal and place that at any of the other numbers not associated with that portal and hopefully putting more traction into a specific space so you can gain certain cards. I really, really enjoyed this game. It's a two-player game, which works well with a back and forth. If you want a die roller game that has a little bit of a bidding aspect and a unique mechanic that has you basically rolling die to determine how you want to bid, you're gonna enjoy this game quite a bit. My only critique on it, or my only sad thing about it, is the fact that you can't play with more than two players. I would like to see it at four, but after discussing with the designer, turns out that it probably gets a little too crazy in order for that to work, but maybe I'll go ahead and try try it nevertheless just to see how much how, how it would actually work overall school of sorcery is a lot of fun and i strongly suggest you take a look at this game if you like two-player games if you like competitive die roller games they introduce a new and unique bidding mechanic that i haven't ever seen before i really enjoyed this one take a look down below it's on kickstarter if you'd like to pick up the game thank you guys for watching and as always i look forward to seeing you guys next time